This is the Uconnect 4C media screen that's available inside of the Challenger. So the Challenger does technically have three available choices. It's either going to be the Uconnect 4 7 inch, this Uconnect 8, uh, 4C 8.4 inch, and then there's the 8.4 with navigation. This one just doesn't have the navigation, but factory nav is available as an option. Even if yours doesn't have it, we can still connect either a Google or an iPhone or an Android or an iPhone device to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or a Waze, which is fantastic. But I'll get to that one once we get into our phone. So let's start off with our main screen. So typically going to be met off with the media screen and we're going to go line by line so you can learn everything about this screen. So firstly, we've got what temperature is currently going on and we do have the option, as you can see there, for dual zone climate control along the top. We've got our current time as well as our current temperature outside. And then from there, we do have all of our presets so we can adjust what preset pages we're on. And if we want to ever save a preset, so all we have to do is tune. So we can tune this way, we can tune using this instead. Or we can also press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel if we wanted to change a station that way. So we've got quite a few different options. But once you're on the station that you want to change, or you want to save, I should say, all you're going to do is set it right there. We're just going to hold in order to be able to set it as a station. So it's at these easy setting up presets. But i got to do a quick little audio test. So... Nice sound inside of this thing. I'll talk you through setting up the audio settings for that in a second to get a little bit better sound. But this is the nine speaker Alpine system. We do have the option, so there's either a six, a nine speaker, and then there's the 18 speaker Harman Kardon as well. So you've got quite a few different options that are available there. But bass sound is great. We've got the option of changing between AM, FM, Sirius, XM, and a number of other options. So if you had a 3.5 mil cable for like an old school audio device, you can plug that in. USB audio, so if you had a USB stick with MP3s, that would also be there as an available option, which is fantastic. But we can select whatever option we want there as well. And then, so we've got, as you can see, so switching between different options there. You've got your fave, you can replay, and then you've got a few other things as well. But let's jump into our FM for a second there. We can browse stations this way. So you can see all of our different presets that are available there and pressing that button, or we can press the back button that you saw there to jump forwards, backwards, etc. So as we go through, we can also change out this way. We can tune, as I mentioned, or we can go to our audio setting there. So audio gives us a few options so we can adjust what's going on with our balance and fade. We can change out our treble mid-range, our bass mid-range and treble. So what I normally recommend, slightly more bass, a little bit less treble, and let's give that a... So it just cranks it, it just makes it sound that much better. So I definitely recommend something like this, typically is a pretty good setup. Speed adjusted volume, so as we go a little bit faster, slower, whatever the case may be, it's automatically gonna increase or decrease the volume for us. So we've got that flexibility to adjust as we want to. We've got our autoplay as well, so when we have USB devices hooked up, it's automatically going to play. So we can toggle that thing on or off as well. We'll get to some more advanced audio settings down at the bottom there, but that's really it. That's the basics of the audio screen. You do have Sirius XM with up to a year of service, depending on which version of the vehicle that you've gone for. But moving into our climate settings next. So series of climate settings there. We've also got some right down the center stack as well. But on this screen, we've got our air condition, max AC, air conditioning, auto, front rear, uh, rear window shield defrosters. We've also got our dual zone climate control. We can control from the inside. Do we want it to go into our windshield face feet? Some sort of Frankenstein combination of the above. We can turn the whole system off. We can also adjust our fan speed this way if we'd like to. And the sync button is if we've got it set differently for the passenger for, compared to the driver, if we hit sync, it's going to default it to whatever the driver's side setup is. So you've got that flexibility very easily through the screen here to do that. Like I said, we've got a series of other options available in the center stack there as well. It's just going to be a matter of preference how you access them. We can jump into our controls there. So we've got two ways we can do it. On the climate screen, we can hit controls, which launches this page, or we can just hit the controls page there instead. We do have the option for ventilated front seats. Heated steering wheel is gonna be optional, but the ventilated seats inside of this, incredible. And it's first row, heated ventilated front seats is an option, depending on which packages you've gone for inside of your, char inside of your Challenger. But as I just mentioned, heated steering wheel. We can turn our auto dimming rear view mirror on or off. We've also got some additional settings there. So as you can see there, we can change between English, Spanish, French. We've, we've got some series of, a series of different options for displays and things like that. But the majority of these settings, I'm gonna save for when we get down here. But that's the basics of the, uh, the controls for this part. Next up are gonna be our Uconnect apps. 
And as you can see there, so, so many different options. And the way that this looks and what options are gonna be available will depend on the version of the vehicle you're in. Like when you're in the SRT Hellcat, it, the jailbreak, you're gonna have different options available as if in comparison to the regular GT. But we're in the 392, so we've got our, our SRT mode, we've got different performance pages and things like that. So let's kind of break all of these different ones down. So let's start off with our SRT mode along the very top. So this is the auto mode. So the vehicle is essentially automatically determining what's going on with everything here. We've got options now. So we can set things up for track, for sport, and we can also create a custom one as well. But one of the cool things is that in all of these different setups, we can go to our different setup and we can select what's going on with our transmission, paddle shifters, our traction and suspension, as well as our steering. So we've got quite a few different options that are available here and it's gonna be a matter of preference. Like the sport mode, this is kind of ideal. But one of the cool things is like, let's say if we're in the custom mode, we can set this up how we'd like to. So it essentially is going to act differently. But if you wanna to toggle your paddle shifters off. So if you're in the eight speed automatic transmission, you will have paddle shifters inside of the vehicle but if you don't want to use the paddle shifters you've got the flexibility to turn it off if you want to we've got options for our traction control so traction sport versus our street mode we can change out the dynamics of the suspension and steering as well and it's incredible but what we can do with this but each mode will do something different like the traction for the wheel slippage and things like that is going to be very different in street compared to the track mode moving back We've got different race options that are available. So we've got our line lock there. We've got launch control, which can be activated based off of a certain RPM as well. So as we spool up, hit that RPM, we're gonna be launched, uh, we're gonna have launch control active, which is gonna help out with overall stability. We've also got our shift light there as well. So as we hit certain RPMs, it's gonna let us know that we should be shifting. So it's gonna be a matter of preference there, whether or not that one shows up. And this one is the eight speed automatic. So you'll have it whether you're in the automatic or the six speed manual transmission instead. We've also got a valet mode as well, which is kind of neat. So you essentially enter in a custom pin code and that's essentially going to lock out certain things. So a valet driver wouldn't be able to go in and lock the truest performance inside of this vehicle. Certain versions of the Challenger also have the options for two individual key fobs, so red versus black, which is going to give you some different options for a base, essentially going to be kind of like a locked dull down version versus the fully unlocked version instead, which is kind of neat but so many different options. Like I said, I do love the fact that we can customize this however we want to, to change out our traction, stability, suspension, and things like that, selecting whatever mode we want to. I love that Dodge has this flexibility right in this middle screen. And moving back again into our SRT dashboard now. So same thing, we've got quite a few different options available for our track versus sport versus custom mode. And then we've got our auto mode there along the top right hand side again. So we go into our drive modes, we can exit out of that. Oh, interesting. So we've got our drive modes, we've got our performance pages, which that's gonna launch into the performance pages along the very bottom there. So actually, ah, while we're here, we may as well do it. So it takes a second to launch up there, but once it does, you can see everything that's going on. So you've got your home versus different timers. So if you're going on the track, you can save your different track times to see how you're improving as you go. You've got different options for gauges, so we can see exactly what's going on with our oil, pressure, temp, things like that. So as we start to give it a little bit of gas, you can kind of see it kind of adjusting things on the fly. Same idea with our G-force, our engine. So you can see what's going on with our horsepower, torque, etc. You've got your current speed and a few other things. And then you've also got the option to look at the dyno as we go here, so you can kind of see it going. We can also take a peek at our history if we want to. We can kind of customize it out so we can see the difference between power versus torque. And then we've also got the flexibility of turning our gear on versus off there as well. Moving back home again, so as you can see, it kind of gives us exactly what's going on. We can see what gear we're currently in as we go as well. So we're in first gear, we can slap it up, adjust gears out that way as well if we want to. We've got our G-Force, and we can also add in a custom widget. So if you wanted to add in gauges, timers, whatever the case may be. You've also got the flexibility of snapshotting. Ah, so I don't currently have anything set up, but if you had a USB stick, you could also save all of your different performance there as well. And really useful if you're gonna be taking this thing onto a track. We can push this little settings icon if we wanna be able to customize individual options there as well. Moving back, that's the basics of the, uh, well, basics, but there's still so much of the performance pages down there. Hopping back into our dashboard, we can access the performance pages either there or through the bottom as well. Looking at our race options there, that gets us back into our line lock launch control versus our shift light. 
And we've also got our shift light. So essentially we've got different options for our launch control and things like that. So rather than having to kind of push in between different options, we can just go to this screen, so our SRT dashboard, and that's gonna give us everything lined out nice and easily. But as you see, we jump between different modes. We go between our sport versus custom and things like that, and it's going to adjust it out kind of on the fly as we go. And moving back into our U apps again, we've got our driver heat, driver ventilation. So the way I want you to think of the U apps, it's more or less every available option inside of the vehicle. So we can turn on our driver passenger heat, which you notice we could also access if we're on our controls along the very bottom there as well. Projection Manager is also going to be tied into our Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we'll set, show you how to set that one up once we get into the phone, but we're going to go to Projection Manager to see that. If we've got different audio sources that are paired up, as well as our different phones that are available there as well. We've got a Wi-Fi hotspot, so some versions of the Challenger will have the option for a 4G modem. Gives us some flexibility as well there. We've got our SOS versus our assist mode. We can activate different services, look at notifications. We can access our performance pages up here as well. We can toggle on our heated steering wheel, dimmer. We can jump into Sirius XM Media instead. So there are so many options available through this UApp screen along the very bottom. We've got our climate controls, phone, etc. So, so many different ways we can get to all of the different options that we'd like to there. And then one of the cool things is that we can also do a drag if we want to kind of move this around as well. So if you want to customize the screen a little bit, you'd have the flexibility to be able to do that. Next up, moving into our phone. So as you can see there, as of right now, there are no phones that are currently connected and setting a phone up is really straightforward. So you're gonna start off with, so as of right now, no phone is paired and we're going to go to pairing along the very bottom. We've got our paired phones audio devices and we're gonna go add device. You can see Uconnect pop up. Pin numbers match up, which is great. So we're gonna pair, yes. Here we go. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say no on this one. And it supports, uh, supports phone and audio as well. And then we can also press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel if we want to be able to activate our Siri assistant as well, which is kind of neat. So you can see Siri going crazy there. So phone is now connected. So if we press phone now, we've got my favorites. We've got recents, contacts, keypad. We've got the pairing again. So the phone essentially is going to be connected there. But I mean, it is really straightforward. We can press the voice command prompt now on the steering wheel if we want to have it Can't dial out to people there as well. Now one thing, uh, because I selected no to the contacts, it's not going to download the contacts automatically, but you do have the flexibility of being able to change that out. We can jump into our paired phones, we can go to this, we can disconnect, we can make it a favorite, or we can also delete the phone there. So that's simple being able to set it up. Now one of the cool things, if we go into our media again, select source, we've got Bluetooth now, and we're connected to my phone instead. So we've got different options for tracks. We can play podcasts and things like that. So certain things will work over Bluetooth. Other ones you can connect to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. But it is nice that we've got the flexibility. This is a good episode of Smart List. If you've never listened to it, it's, it's incredible. But overall, this screen is fantastic. I do love all the flexibility. We can press the phone button there to jump back in, go to our keypad to dial out this way instead. Or as I mentioned, voice command prompt if we wanna make phone calls that way instead. So it's really straightforward. Now, we do also have the option of setting up Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So let's start off with Apple CarPlay. Our USB sticks are going to be available here as an option and we're gonna drop down. And from here, what we're gonna do is plug in. And do we want to allow CarPlay while the Uconnect, uh, with Uconnect while the phone is locked? Yeah, but as you saw there, didn't even finish this part up and it was already launched. So it's that simple being able to set up Apple CarPlay inside of this thing. We've got phones, we've got maps, we've got podcasts, Google Maps, Apple Maps are ways. So even though this thing doesn't have factory navigation, we can still connect to one of these other map applications if we want to. And it's all available right through this middle screen. We can easily search for addresses. We can go to our favorites. We can search this way. We've got options there to change out different modes. We can kind of move it this way as well. Zoom in, zoom out. We can go left, we can go right with it. Done, we can reset her. So many different options that are available. Along the side here, you can see we've got podcasts, we've got my phone, and then this is gonna bring us back to the main screen. So we can kind of swipe across. So you can see there, we've got our maps, we've got our, the ability to search the phone, and then we've got available podcasts or whatever music is currently playing or available on the phone. So if you're using Spotify, Live One, et cetera, they would show up there as an available option. But swiping across gives us quite a few different options that are available. If you prefer to use Apple Maps, you've got that flexibility. You can easily search for addresses as well. So we can type in if we want to. We can go one, two, three.
search. And then, I mean, it's so straightforward to use. We've got different root options that are available there. So we can select what root, we hit go. And it's launching up on the phone there as well, but it's right through the screen. So, I mean, so. Starting route to 570 highway, 2W. So, so simple being able to use this thing. Pressing back there again brings us back to the main screen. So it is really, really simple to be able to use this. I mean, looking through podcasts, if you had music set up, not every app is available through Apple CarPlay. So YouTube Music would be able to, would be streamed over Bluetooth versus let's say if you were looking at Live One or podcast things like that are done up over Apple CarPlay. But like I said, not everyone is available here, but you do have the flexibility of connecting over Bluetooth rather than going through CarPlay. If we press the CarPlay button along the very bottom there, it's going to launch us back into CarPlay. So it doesn't matter what screen we're on, we can press CarPlay to launch back into this. Now if we go into, oh, where were we? Our apps there along the bottom. We can, oh, wrong one. We go into our projection manager. We've got the phone that's connected. We can disconnect it or hop inside to disable Apple CarPlay if we want to. We can have it forget the device, but in order to forget the device, we actually have to be disconnected in order to make that happen. So we've got a few different options that are available there. We can easily reconnect. We can make it our favorite device there. But it's that simple setting up an iPhone inside of the Challenger. And setting up an Android is the exact same process. So if you weren't on this screen, let's say you're on media, whatever the case may be, we just go into our phone. I currently have the iPhone connected. So we can go pairing, or if you're under settings, if you're under apps, whatever the case may be, we can go to our projection manager there, look at paired phones, and we're just gonna go add device. So on our phone now, we're gonna hop in and we're waiting for Uconnect to show up there. There we go. We're gonna connect. And the pin numbers match up, so we're gonna hit okay and yes. Allow access to messages, yes, no, I'm gonna hit deny there for contacts and for messages. Do you wanna make it your favorite? So I'm gonna say no for now, but I wanna show you something. So if you've got multiple phones connected to the vehicle, it's whose device do you wanna have connection priority? So if both phones are in the vehicle, which one's it gonna to connect to first? So you've got that option, we can press inside there if we want to, also remove, so we can just hit delete there, delete yes, no, in order to be able to switch, but in order to be able to remove the phones, we press the phone button along the very bottom to launch into the Android now. So as you can see, we've got the Galaxy S9 Plus, battery levels, as well as our current signal along the top there. We can enter do not disturb, reply with text messages and things like that. We go into pairing, we've got paired phones, projection manager, so, so many different options that are available here. Paired audio sources, you can see what's going on there, and then we enter our projection manager. So projection manager is only showing the iPhone because we haven't set up Apple or Android Auto as of yet. So let's go through that process. Same idea, what we're gonna do, Take our USB cable and we're just going to plug it in. And that's just right in the armrest there. So you've got some data ports there. Opposite end of the cable, we're plugging ourselves in there. And watch that. Android Auto would like to. So we're just going to hit next. Interesting. Oh, there we go. I was like, what's happening? It does take a little bit sometimes in order for it to fully connect, but I mean a few seconds there and like three, two, one, we're fully connected. So very similar to the Apple side of things. Like it does take up the full screen real estate there, which is great. We've got our little settings button along the top. So we've got our base Google Maps, which we can adjust easily there. We can zoom in, zoom out, and we can do a pinch to zoom here as well. We can recenter this way. We can also jump into a few other options. So We've got the flexibility of looking through all of our different options for Google Maps. So if we wanna change out our route options for different things to avoid, we can press this for our music as well. So music, podcasts, etc. Moving back again, we've also got our music notifications, some media suggestions. We've got our notification center, and then we've also got our Google Assistant. So we've got the Google Assistant there. We can also press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel to get into our assistant there as well. So you've got a few different ways we can access it. Pressing this little button along the bottom left part of the tray launches us back into this screen. So we've got my Google Maps there, we've got messages, games, and things like that that are available. But very similar to the Apple side, YouTube is not gonna be available as an option here. So we can't stream audio, or sorry, we can't stream video, and then audio through YouTube has to be connected over Bluetooth rather than through Android Auto. But we've at least got that flexibility. As I said, with Google Maps, very straightforward. We jump into our podcasts, our music, and things like that. It's just, it's so straightforward to use. We press the, any other button there, and then we press the Android button along the bottom to launch back into Android Auto. Very straightforward, we jump back into our apps now, Projection Manager, and now we've got the Android there. So we've selected, we've set both of these things up. So if I forget the 
Apple that was connected. As you can see there, fully, does, fully removed that. We've only got the Android that we're worrying about now. All right now, very similar to the Apple CarPlay side of things, on our phone, if we search for Android Auto, We've got our settings that are available there. Series of options, we can customize the launcher. So if you, if we jump back into Android there, go to our screen, oh perfect, uh, back to our screen, there we go. So we've got our main screen there. So we would have the flexibility of kind of doing a drag and drop if we wanted to change around the order here. So it's not quite, this is just my fingers. Yeah, there we go, okay, it's just my fingers. But we can kind of adjust up and down there easily. Now one thing, as you can see, it's not dynamic like it was on the Apple side of things. So we actually do have to close down Android Auto, relaunch it for any changes we make to the launcher to come into effect on the screen. But we've got our Google detection, day night mode for maps, we've got weather, traffic, alerts. It does say wireless Android Auto, but unfortunately Uconnect 4 is a wired connection. So even though it says wireless, we don't have the option to use wireless Android Auto through this screen uh, natively. There are some little devices you could look at using, just not available right from the factory though. But that's how we set up Android Auto and Apple CarPlay inside of this thing. And I mean, as you saw there, really, really straightforward to do. We can easily disconnect. We can remove it once we Unplug, forget device, and it's removed that, but we still do have both of the phones connected there. But that's how we set up Android and iPhone devices to the Challenger. All right, next up, so that's the basics of adding in a phone. We've also got some options for settings now. So we've got, we saw some of these earlier, so what language do we want? Do we want English, Spanish, or French? We've got our display unit, so tons of different options that are available here as well. So we've got different options for our mode. We can have it switch out, so auto mode means it's automatically going to adjust what's going on with the brightness there. We've got our themes, so we've got a few different options available here. It's going to be a matter of personal preference. What do you like the look of? So you can just kind of make it out. They're very small. Hey, there you go. You've got that Hellcat in the back there. So you've got the option of adjusting this out on the screen if we'd like to for different theme options. The, we've got a touchscreen beep as an available option there as well, which we can we can remove that beep if we want to. We can also have the screen timeout and blackout if we would like to different options for units. Do we want to go US metric versus custom? Different options for our voice. So the voice length is going to be either brief or detailed. So as we do things like change songs, radio stations, navigate using our voice, the as we as we do anything, rather than it giving us a long explanation of what's happening, it's just going to do it. And that list that came up, we can have it always show up with help or we can have it never show up. Different options for our clocks, so we can change out hours, minutes or time formats. For camera, we've got our backup camera delay, as well as our backup guidelines. So as we shift her into reverse, you can see there we've got those guidelines that are available. So whether or not those ones show up, it's going to be a matter of personal preference there. Next up, we've got some options for safety and driver assistance. So, well, you heard it there as we went to go back up. So it's that sound and display versus just the sound, the volume, either a low, medium, or a high volume. Our blind spot system, so that's going to let us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. And then we've also got our hill start assist. Moving back, we've also got our mirrors and wipers. So tilting, so when we throw the vehicle into reverse, our side view mirrors are potentially going to lower themselves down so we can see what's going on on the ground beside us. We can turn our rain sensing wipers on off, and then we can also have our wipers, our headlights come on when we have the wipers activate. And from there, we've got options for lights. So when we go to lock the vehicle using the key fob, do the headlights stay on for zero seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, or 90 seconds? So a few options there. Do we want to have our headlights illuminate as we approach the vehicle with the key fob on us? Do we want to activate our headlights with our wipers and flash our lights with our locks? Now, one thing you'll notice is some things are going to show up in multiple places in the vehicle. So you can see there, headlights with our wipers, which were also available under our mirrors and wipers there as well. So you will notice a little bit of repetition as we move through some of these screens. So as you see there, with our lights, we've got some options for our doors and locks. So auto unlock on exit, do we want to have the vehicle automatically unlock? Or do we want to have our lights flash with our locks when we go to lock the vehicle? When we go to lock the vehicle, do we want to have a horn, yes or no, with our first, second press, or no horn at all? When we remote start the vehicle using the fob, do we want to also have the horn sound? And passive entry exit, etc. So that essentially means that we have our key fob on us, and then we can just use the, we can just grab onto the door in order to be able to unlock there instead. And then we can also have all of our personal settings saved to our individual key fob, which is amazing. Back again, we've got some options for seats. Easy exit seats. So if you've got power seats inside of your Challenger, what's going to happen is as you turn the vehicle off, you go to get out, it's going to automatically lower the seats and back them up just so you can get out of the vehicle a little bit easier. 
And then we've also got the option for our auto on for our heated ventilated seats. So what that means is that when we go to remote start the vehicle, do we want to have our heated ventilated seats turn on? Do we want to have that regardless? So when we start the vehicle, will the heated or ventilated seats and the heated steering wheel turn on? Or we can have that turn off, etc. So we've got a few different options available there. Key options, easy exit seats, which I showed you earlier. We've got our key off delay, our headlight off delay as well. So again, as we go to lock the vehicle, do our lamps stay on? We've got options for audio, which we saw that earlier. So adjusting our treble mid-range bass, etc. Phone and Bluetooth options now. So this is where we get into a few other things. So our do not disturb mode. We can jump back into our paired phones, projection manager, etc. And we've also got, where are we, phone Bluetooth? Oh, no, I think we're Sirius XM, yeah. So we've got our tune to start. We can skip out certain channels as well. So if you're a heavy Sirius XM listener and you don't like listening to Pop 2K, you can disable that as well if you'd like to. You've also got your subscription info. So one of the cool things is that you do have the flexibility of getting up to a year of service when you purchase a new Dodge vehicle. If you already have an active Sirius XM subscription, we can go to subscription info, give all of the info to Sirius XM, and they can transfer the subscription over for us. We can also do a reset to clear all personal data, certain data points, etc. So if you're going to sell your Challenger, just clear all personal data just to make things a little bit easier on yourself. But that, outside of system information, which nothing crazy there, just software licenses, are going to be basics. Well, basics, that's everything you need to know about the settings. So there are so, so many different options that are available for our settings there. And then you saw earlier, we also do have our performance pages, which... I mean, I, I love the performance pages so much. It gives us so much flexibility. Again, big thing is going to be if you're going to be taking this thing onto the track. Like I know just having the flexibility of having timers built in with the gauges available there as an option, like that, that's huge. And like being able to switch between different gauges there as well. We can also kind of do an adjust. If we want to be able to adjust out, we can go full screen with each individual gauge. So if you want one gauge to be showing and you want that to kind of be the focal point, the highlight as we go, you've got that flexibility. But so many incredible options inside of this screen, but that's everything that you need to know about the Uconnect 4 media screen inside of the 2022 Challenger. So that was a look at the Uconnect 4 media screen inside of the Challenger. Unchanged from the 21 versus the 22, but I love all of the different options that are available. Like having the performance pages, that SRT dashboard menu, so, and like the ability to customize everything for different drive modes as well, I think is phenomenal. But if you run into any problems, you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. If you enjoyed the video, let me know as well. But if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up and think about sharing it with your social networks and subscribing to the channel if you haven't. And until I see you next time. Take care.